Since its release, I always had a problem with After Effects 3D features. Sure, it was nice finally having native 3D support, but it was always so limited that I could never get realistic results out of it. That was until I recently discovered a game-changing method that lets me easily create photorealistic visual effect shots bypassing After Effects limitations. Take a look. Okay, so before I tell you what this game-changing method is, we first need to understand what the problem with After Effects 3D capabilities actually is. So, when you create a visual effect shot in a professional 3D program, you can use something called an HDI. This lets you capture the lighting on set and then relight your 3D model you found online with the exact lighting from the original scene, making it look super realistic. Now, technically, we can do something similar in After Effects using the environment light, but the way it's calculated is completely different, so the results end up looking flat and unrealistic. Okay, so After Effects has a problem with lighting 3D models. If only there were another way to capture the lighting on set. Okay, so maybe you've guessed it now. We're going to use photogrammetry to scan our model on set with lighting and reflections already baked in. Now, this of course means we can't just use any model we want and have to use something we are physically on set. But 3D scanning is super fun and if we use something we have on set, we can even interact with it which is what I did in the opening scene. To create the effect, I simply captured a video of myself pretending to lift the axe and then catch it. To add an extra element to it, I set up my camera to change focus with the press of a button and timed it with the shot. However, you can also do the focus change digitally. To scan the axe, I used Kiri Engine, who were kind enough to sponsor this video. But, that's my honest opinion, they are the best at 3D scanning. You can just download the app and scan your model using your phone, completely for free. Simply select photo scan, then take photos and walk around your model, capturing as many different angles as possible. Make sure there's plenty of overlap between the shots so the software can better reconstruct the model. Once you're done, change the file format to GATF and upload them. If you want an even higher quality model, you can also use your camera to capture the photos and then create the model using the Kiri Engine website, which is what I did for the opening scene. To improve the quality even further, you will need to use the Pro subscription, which will allow you to upload more images and therefore create more advanced scans. It also has lots of other features, so if you want to try it out for free, you can use the code BSB Studios to test it for 7 days. Just head to your account, go to settings and select redeem code. After that, you can upload your high-res images and get an even higher quality model. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump into After Effects and get started. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects. I've already imported my footage right here. I'm going to import my 3D scan right here and then drag and drop it into the timeline. We can name it X and make it comp size. Click OK. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention is that it's very important to turn on the AI object masking while uploading the images so that Kiri Engine can automatically delete everything that's not the model now in my case there were still some parts left which were not part of the model so I still had to use Blender to delete some parts and smooth some things out but um, for your model this might not be the case so I'm not going to go further on that in this tutorial. Okay so as a first step I'm just going to take the X and move it closer to the camera and rotate it so that we can see it better. Okay so once I have it in a position I'm happy with I'm just going to unfold here the options for the X and create a keyframe for orientation and position. Then just press U to isolate them. Now I'm going to move uh, to the last frame before um, the X starts moving, which is probably here. And I'm just going to move the keyframes right here and then move uh, to the frame where the X should enter the scene. And here I wanna rotate the X a little bit to give it some movement and make it feel more alive. So I'm going to rotate it like this because we saw in the shot before that it lays flat on the ground. Then uh, like this maybe a little bit and then we can just take it right here and move it out of frame. Okay, so to give it a smooth stop, I'm still going to select the keyframes right here and make them easy ease in at the end and make the graph here a little sharper. 
And now we already got something like this. So we can now um, go ahead and go a couple of frames forward. And here I wanna have the X in my hand. So what I'm gonna do is open up a second view and just take the X and move it backwards and position it in my hands right here. And then we can go forward a couple of frames, move it um, a little bit back, you know, just a little bit, and then uh, find unit here. Then go further forward, moving it back again with some more rotation. And then here behind my back, uh, we're not gonna see it anyway later. So uh, we can just uh, close the second view. And now we can go in between the keyframes and adjust if necessary. Okay, so now we got something like this. And to now put the X in my hands and then later behind my body, uh, we could just manually go in and roto all of this uh, or just do a half manual roto, which is what we're gonna do. So uh, we're just going to duplicate the footage and go to the first frame where we're going to need the roto, uh, which is right here, because it's going to enter my uh, hands uh, in this frame. And then we can just rename the layer to roto, change the resolution to full, and then with the roto brush tool, just double click on the footage, and zoom in and draw around your extra. Uh, the feet are not really uh, important anyway. It's just important that the upper body, where the X will be later, um, is solid. Um, so we can just uh, press play and then just freeze once you're finished. And next we will need to pre-compose the roto. So just select it and press Ctrl Shift C. Select move all attributes and just uh, name it roto. Um, if, if you want to avoid confusion, we can just delete everything in front of it and since it's a half automatic roto we still need to uh, grab the pen tool select the layer and draw a mask around my hand uh, just like so and then just press m and animate the mask path go a couple frames uh, forward and then once it goes uh, behind my back we can just uh, open the mask like this and just uh, roll to right uh, the upper part uh, like this. And then just uh, open the mask like this. And now still create a second mask for the head. And the X should be behind my head since this frame. So uh, I'm just going to uh, go around like this. Because we already used the roto brush tool and now don't have to be precise. Um, press M twice to reveal both mask path and then also animate this one. And if we now move the roto layer above the X, we can check if it worked, uh, which it did. So if you now wanna still improve the animation, you can do that, but I'm happy with it. So I'm actually going to go ahead and move on with the next step, which is color matching the X with our footage. Uh, because currently it still doesn't really fit in the scene. So as a first step, I'm just going to right click in the timeline, go to new and select light and make it an environment light. And that's also the reason why we're using the beta version, um, just because we can now go to source and change the source to our footage and then uh, turn it back on. And if I toggle the environment light, we can see that the lighting changed uh, drastically. Um, now I'd say the lighting is a lot better than before. Now it's obviously way too dark and green now, but we're going to fix that in the next step. So we can't just apply any effects on a 3D object. So we have to do a little workaround and duplicate the footage, take the footage with this little sign right here, uh, the light and the X and put it into its own pre-comp, call it X and uh, nothing should change. And if that's the case, we now have our X, but uh, just as a separate video, basically. Um, if you still wanna do changes, you can just uh, go in here and do so. Now I actually wanna start with a curves effect. So I'm just going to apply it uh, like this. And I actually captured a reference photo uh, while I was on set uh, with the real X. 
So I also imported it right here. And to see it better, I'm just going to create a mask like this. And now it's way easier to color match the eggs. Now, if you're struggling with color matching, there actually is a pretty cool trick uh, which you can use. So first of all, I'm just going to uh, uh, just brighten the eggs. And now we would have to go into each and every channel and adjust the colors of them. But if you're struggling with that, you can go down uh, to the three colors right here and start with the red color, just select it. And then just using the red curve, try to match the X on the right with the X on the left. Then go on to the next channel and repeat. And then just change back to RGB right here. And if you now toggle the curves effect on and off, we can see what a difference we've made. Um, so that's already way better than before. Now the next step is optional, but if you want, you can go ahead and add the Create Light Wrap plugin. Um, it's a free plugin which you can download um, from the Production Crate website. I'm gonna leave it in the description down below, but uh, you can just uh, take your footage as a background layer, maybe increase the blur to 50 here and blend with original. I'm just going to do it very subtle right here. So I'm going to select 95, but if you're going to turn this on and off, we can see that uh, it just added a little bit of um, halation around the edges, which just blends it in a little bit more. If you want to see it more clearly, you can also decrease this number right here. And then you can really see what this effect is doing. I'm probably going to leave it at 93 or something. So since I did the focus change manually uh, on the camera, the X should also be affected by it. Uh, so we can see here uh, the focus starts shifting, but the X remains uh, completely in focus which of course is unrealistic. So what we can do is add the camera lens blur effect, keyframe it at zero before it starts, and then just move through the timeline one step forward. So the focus started shifting. So I'm going to um, increase it a little bit, then one frame forward. And now the focus is on me. Um, so I think it can just stay like this. And then right here, where it enters my hand, I can change it back to zero. These are just some little details, which in the end uh, makes a difference. And with that, it's pretty much finished. Uh, the only thing we still have to add is some motion blur, because um, even when the X is like flying to the air super fast, uh, it just uh, doesn't get blurry. So what we have to do is add in a pixel motion blur effect, put it in front of everything else, increase the sample to something like 16. And once it comes up right here, we can see that we already have some good motion blur. But uh, then later, when it starts flying to the scene, the motion blur sort of eats up uh, the X. So we will just have to go ahead one frame before it starts moving and um, animate the curves effect, go forward and just boost the alpha channel and then obviously animate it back to zero again once we've uh, caught it. Okay, and once you've got this, the rest is totally up to you. Uh, you could, go, for example, go ahead and add in an adjustment layer with a Lumetri color effect, do some color grading, maybe add in a LUT. Some sound effect would also really elevate the scene. Soundly, for example, is my favorite library for sound effects, but uh, you can obviously use whatever you want. And then in the end, you should have something like this. Okay, so this method works well, but what if I want to add something to my video I don't have with me on set? Well, I also made a video on that, in which I show you how you can add a dragon to your video in the most realistic way possible. You can check it out here.